<clears throat> What's up guys, how's it going? Sorry for that uh, quick hiatus I had there. There was a little bit of a dip in uploads, but we're back now. I'm here with another deck tech. I got many more coming your way. Uh, I'm just trying to work out the kinks because the meta's been changing a little bit. Uh, I thought it had stabilized, but now there's a few more tweaks I've been wanting to do to some of the decks. Um, if you look at the arena wiki, I do have plenty of just deck ideas thrown up there if you want to check those out. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about my favorite deck, Mono Black. Any format where you can profitably play Mono Black is a format I am a fan of. <laughs> so we'll get right into it. I will say first thing is that there's going to be about a one to five card difference in any iteration of Mono Black based on your rank, because the meta looks a lot different at certain ranks. So for instance, this to me, this has taken me to Master Tier. So you're going to be versing a lot more completed red deck wins, approach, blue, white, flash. Um, and then some Grixis control in there, more than the blue, black control. So I'm going to be playing a lot more hand disruption and that sort of nonsense. And then a lot more early interaction that gains you life. And then some golden demise is sprinkled in. So we'll get into it. Once I get into the end, I'll talk about what each different sort of rank wants to do to change a few of the cards to change what the deck looks like to be better for your meta. But right now I'll just go in and talk about my choices for these cards in this particular deck, talk about how it works in the meta against specific decks, and then the changes you want to make. So we'll get into it. Right now we got one Duress, um, we don't have Fatal Push, and I want to do stuff on turn one, because that is the one of the biggest benefits of being a mono color deck, is you have untapped colored land of the right color right away. Um, but right now I can only fit in one Duress, because the problem is if you're going against mono red, top decking this feels really bad. So you need a little bit more interaction against mono red, which is honestly, it can be, I played an event yesterday where it was six of my eight games was mono red. So we're kind of hedging our bets with this a little bit. Um, you'll see later on why there was only one. Um, so we got four Dusk Legion Zealot. This is super important because it just smooths out your draws. It's a really good chump blocker to be able to protect your planeswalkers. You see we're only running, <laughs> what's that, four, eight, nine creatures <laughs> that are uh, we can get into play before planeswalkers. So yeah, he just does everything you want. He makes sure you hit your fourth line drop. If you don't hit your fourth line drop, you lose a lot of the time. So he's just there to make sure you do that because you usually start with about two to three lands in hand. So absolute powerhouse of a card. <laughs> and he's a common, so. Next we run two cast down. We don't run a lot of these because it is just pretty much straight up a dead card against blue white flash. Um, you can kill the history of Benalia tokens, but yeah, so it's dead in that matchup. Against blue black, it's really only good for getting rid of maybe killing a glyph keeper or getting rid of a eternalized champion wits. But other than that, you're never really happy to see it in that matchup. Um, it's an absolute bomb against red green, but I never see that. It's like once every like two quick constructed events, I see a red green. Um, mono green, it's super good because then you can, even if you're on the play, you'll be able to kill their Steel Leaf champion before they get in there. So that's amazing. So just two though. It's it's good when you want it, but you never want to see two pretty much. Um, I guess it's also good against mono red because now we have six turn two plays to kill their on crop crashers if we're on the draw or if we're on the play to kill their uh, Earthshaker Kenra, that guy. So yeah, just good as a two of. Uh, next we have four Moment of Craving. This card, <laughs> it's it's just good in so many matchups. In the, in the matchups it's dead, it's absolutely dead. It has very few okay matchups, but blue-black control is an okay matchup. Um, it is really funny when you're on the, when you're on the draw and they play champion wits turn three any moment of craving it and they don't realize that it's reduced its power so they just effectively they're just discarding two cards i've had that happen a few times but yeah it just makes champion wits a dead play and then they have to wait till turn seven to get it back so you're not really you don't really feel that bad to have the two for one happen usually you can even never or return it which is kind of a weird thing to say you can return it before they return it <laughs> um <clears throat> so it's super good there again it's obviously good against mono red. It kills every single one of their threats. 
except for Hazret, and if they play Rekindling Phoenix, but that's usually like a fun of. Chain Whirler kind of comes in quite a bit, but double Mona Craving or, or Golden Demise plus Mona Craving, which you do a lot more than you think, also kills Hazret. So it's just super important card to make sure. Your deck oftentimes only starts playing turn two. So this just gives you just enough of an edge to be able to stay in the game until your bombs come in. Um, next we're running three Doomfall. The reason being we have a ton of targeted removal. So turn one Shaper Sanctuary is a problem. So we have... Six non-targeted removal, which feels pretty good. Actually, seven. Um, <clears throat> the other reason is Carnage Tyrant. He doesn't show up often, but when he does, if you don't have a board presence or your Tetsamok in play, eh, that can be kind of rough. The biggest thing is it is a way to still kill the top-decked Hazret, because your plan usually is to chump him with Dusk Legion Zealot or Chupacabra or a zombie from Liliana, and then you untap and Doomfall it. But also, it's an absolute powerhouse against Approach, um, Blue White Flash, um, Nickel Bullet Stacks, because <laughs> that's, you know, a turn 7 play. Um, it's also really good against Scarab Dead decks, since it exiles, which is super important. Because <clears throat> um, you'll find against Blue Black, half the time we have to deck them. So what you do is use your Doomfalls, Vraska's Contempt, and uh, actually, yeah, those are the only exile effects to exile their Scarab Gods, and then you just cast down Moment of Craving, Chupacabra, all their other threats until they just run out of threats. <laughs> so, Doomfall is an absolute necessity. I would fluctuate, I fluctuate between two and four copies, depending on what you're running into. It can be a little rough against Mono Red. You'd rather have maybe another Vraska's Contempt or uh, an earlier two mana kill spell, but maybe even another Golden Demise if you're running into a lot of Merfolk. I run into maybe one to two merfolk every quick constructed queue, so yeah. <laughs> Which brings us into the Golden Demise. Um, it absolutely destroys Black Red Pirates. I've run into it twice, and the uh, Neckbreaker is their bomb, and along with Captain Landry Storm, and then Dire Fleet Captain, and they're all two toughness. So thanks, Golden Demise. Um, against Burfolk, it's really good. You want it on turn three, otherwise they get really out of control with a Kumena or a... Uh, the dude who puts counters on guys. How can I not remember him right now? You know what I mean. He's the two drop one one. Um, what else? It's actually not that bad against Scarab God decks. I mean, it's you'd rather have Cast Down or Rascal's Contempt, but you usually find a way to play it. Um, you can do this plus Moment of Craving to get rid of all their eternalized creatures with Scarab God. Buy yourself a few turns. Or if you have a few Chupacabras and Lilianas, it lets you swing in there if you have a send, which you hit pretty quickly with this deck, to be honest. <clears throat> um, also, Knight of Grace. <laughs> These two are pretty much your only way to get rid of them. Um, Golden Demise more so, because those decks usually run History of Banalia, and that means they almost always have another thing to exile. So Golden Demise is super important for those decks, because 90% of our creatures... There's eight right there. Can't block a two power first striker. And you know, he'll be three power by then. So if you don't have your Twilight Prophet or your Tetsamok or your Demon Lord Bells and Lock, you're gonna run into some trouble. So Golden Demise is really important to keep you alive. It's it's one of those cards that gets you we have a few two for ones in here that really allow us to get our opponent with an empty hand and we have a Varaska's Contempt in hand, you know? Those are the type of situations we want to be in. So it's just one of those two for ones that you need to capitalize on. Um, next, we have four Chupacabra. This is another amazing two for one. I can't tell you how many times they go. <laughs> next, we have they just have a bunch of like chump, like uh, mana dorks, like land or elves or something like that. You just play Chupacabra, kill the dude they uh, turboed out, and then next they just have dorks because usually they can just chip in with those dorks, and then they're next. Top tech threat will get in there, but nope, he just takes care of them. Um, if you're running, if you can get some tempo going, sometimes I have turn two Zealot, turn three Zealot, turn four Chupacabra against a Scarab God deck. I've changed Chupacabras to where they've had just replay Scarab God like three turns in a row <laughs> and just won the game outright off of that. So if you can't get Exile effects, he buys you time against them. Um, he allows you to chip in some damage against opposing planeswalkers if you have one or two zealots or a zombie in play and you get to top deck him. 
Um, he's a really good target to bring back with Liliana. He's just... I mean, what can I say? He's amazing. He's an impale on a stick. <laughs> so, yeah. Super good. Definitely one for him. Next we have one Twilight Prophet. This has been more of an experiment than anything, but... When you get on the battlefield, if they don't have a removal spell for it, 90% of the time it just stabilizes. In and of itself. Because there's almost no threats in red deck wins that can trade with it. Except for a Eternalized Kenra or a Hazret, which you're saving your Contempts for. So, <clears throat> you'll be fine for those. Um, Chain Whirler, which is their biggest threat, can't do it. On Crop Crasher, if it doesn't exert on it, you're fine. And then it really starts turning the corner, because that card advantage is incredible, and gaining the life is super important. Plus, I can't tell you how many times I flipped over a Never to Return and hit him for 7, which feels really good. So it's been more of an experiment. You might trade it out for something else, maybe another 3-drop or a, another Vraska's Contempt. Depends on your meta, but it's been doing some work for me. Um, next, we have 3 Vraska's Contempt. You don't have a board presence, so we need to be able to take care of opponent Planeswalkers. That's why we have 2 Never, an Eldest Reborn, you know, 6 ways to just one for one, get rid of their Planeswalker. Um, you need it against Hazret, you need it against Scarab God. It's good in every matchup. You need all of this shenanigans to get you to turn four, but once you're on turn four and you have this in your hand, you feel really confident. So yeah, the two life gain is absolutely phenomenal as well. So <laughs> you're gonna want some of that in your life. <clears throat> so just all around good card. The only question is whether you want four, honestly. I've been floating around three just because I've been saving my rare wild cards, but we'll see. Three or four, for sure. Uh, next is Karn. I run three Karn, two Liliana, because we don't run that many creatures, so the card advantage to me ends up being more important than uh, being able to get back creatures with her. There's also a little bit of a risk of decking yourself, so if you play her, mill yourself down to like 20 cards, and then you can't get back your Tetsumak or something because they kill her, you might run into some trouble. So I'm running three card right now. Also, he's easier to play into an empty board because he's got six loyalty. So he really does just... The biggest thing is he let you, lets you hit those land drops. I can't tell you how many times I just play him into a board, let them swing into him twice. Because if he doesn't hit the golden demise, he just dies after like two turns or whatever. But I hit my land drop, get back a Tetsamok, and then now I'm back in the game. So he's incredible. I mean, what can you say? And I just had three of them laying around because I traded all my Mythics in for him because he's good in like almost every deck you play him in. So yeah, he's just that card advantage engine. And later, when you realize you're against approach or something, his minus two actually does come into play. Because the first time you play him and plus him, he goes up to six. You realize all your kill spells are dead. So you don't want a minus one almost ever unless he hits like a Liliana or something. And then you just minus two three times and you have nine power right there. Sometimes you have to do that, so he does double duty for sure. Um, next is one copy of Eldest Reborn. I've never wanted more than one copy of this. But whenever I draw it, I'm happy. You know, when they go Scarab God Pass, you go Eldest Reborn. They feel pretty silly. <laughs> they feel pretty silly. Cause especially if it's the last card in their hand, because I'm one for one with all your Chupacabras and Zelda and stuff. Feels good. Also, I can't tell you how many times my opponent, because we don't have a board presence, goes Karn on an empty board. You don't have your Vraska's Contempt, or you want to save it for a creature. I'll just reborn it, man. For sure. Um, again, it hits Carnage Tyrant, hits Planeswalkers, does everything you want. And it's the only way we can get back our Lilianas or Karns. So if you play Liliana Plus and you mill Karn plus Liliana, which happened to me last game, it feels pretty bad, but this thing can get it back sometimes, so... Feels really good. Next we have two Lilianas. You might want to run three. I'm not sure. It depends on how creature heavy your build is. I'm in the process of making a more creature heavy mid-range version. I'd call this control. The other one's going to be more mid-range. Where I think I'll be running three of her. We'll be testing that, releasing that in the next maybe week or two. We'll see. Also depends on what other decks I want to show you guys. But yeah, I think two is fine here. Because if they don't have an answer for her... You know, they don't, you don't run into a cast out, Ixalan's Binding, Vraska's Contempt, something like that. She'll win the game on her own, for sure. But if you run into a deck where you plus her a few times and then they answer her, if you mill your biggest threats, it can be kind of problematic. <laughs> and if you mill your other Liliana. So just two for now is fine for me. Um, 
Yeah, because the deck she's good against, she's really good against. The deck she's bad against, she's kind of a liability. So, just two. Um, next, we run two Never to Return. This is just another two for one in all the creature based decks. You get to never the best creature, return, trade for their second best creature, which is now their best creature. It's pretty much like a chupacabra on a stick. <laughs> no, not on a stick. Chupacabra spaced out. Um, also, it's important as a turn three play to be able to take care of the opponent in red deck wins their um, Rampaging Frosted on turn three. That's becoming a lot more prevalent since the to token decks are starting to come back. Um, also blue white flash with their Lyra Dawnbringers. <clears throat> so sometimes Chupacabra can be a liability against that guy, so get your nevers in there. Also it takes care of Scarab God. With this deck you want to top out at about 7 mana, because then you get to Tetsamok and play him at the same turn, and then never and return in the same turn. So once you get there you're going to be real happy to top deck this bad boy against almost any deck. <clears throat> Plus if you run into counter spells against it, they only get to counter one part of it. So, if you try to hit the Scarab God with Never, and they counter it, then you get to return their champion with or something, you know? So, just a really good, always, always a two-for-one. Love it. Uh, next, we're on one Demon Lord Bells and Lock. The reason being, the life loss is kind of bad in the matchups it's bad against. The reason we keep him is he's actually a clock. And there's been a few times against Blue Black, I've drawn three to five cards off of him. Because as you can see, our 4 plus category is pretty stacked. <laughs> so yeah, Bells and Lock does absolute work. He's really fun to bring back with Liliana. I can't tell you how many times I just run him out outright against a blue-black player. They're like, yeah, I'm going to counter this. And then they tap out to play like a Chupacabra or something. Or, uh, I don't know, Scarab God. And then I play Liliana, bring him, black, bring him back, and they're like... Phew. Uh, I'm kind of stuck now. So yeah, he's just absolute value. But the matchups he's bad in, he's really bad in. <laughs> so, <clears throat> if you can stabilize early against Red Duck wins, he's amazing because he can block Hazard. That's a big reason for him as well. But yeah, just absolute card advantage engine. Love him. Next we have two Tetsamox. Two is a million times better than one. You know why? You know why? Boom, Lily. Liliana. What can I say, man? I could tell you how many times I've had one Tetsamok in my yard and one in my hand. So I just reveal all the counters. Just make it rain. <laughs> and then you bring back the one from the yard with Liliana, so you still have the one in your hand. They feel pretty, uh, pretty dumb <laughs> running into that. So, yeah, Tetsamok is an absolute bomb. He just helps you stabilize against the go-wide decks. And then also against all those Knight, Knight of Graces and stuff. If you can't find your golden demises, or if they have some sort of pump for them, like a Radiant Destiny or Benelish Marshal, he'll get you there, for sure. And he's a super fast clock to be able to bring back. So, absolutely love myself some Tatsumak action. Um, next we get into the lands. I, won, I run one if near deadlines, that's because I only have one. You might be able to get away with two. The life loss is kind of rough, because we do run a lot of utility lands. I run three colorless lands, so 20 swamp. Pretty standard, whatever. Two arch, because there's a lot of times where your opponent's top decking and you're top decking. And if they have any sort of two for one creatures, like a um, Registore Alpha, that uh, cast down is looking pretty dumb in your hand now. So you need arch to be able to come back from against control if they're countering all your spells, or if you're one for one with a bunch of creature heavy decks and then they play, you know. There's a lot of two-for-ones going on. Rekindling Phoenix, um, History of Benalia. If you don't have your Golden Demises or Vraska's Contempt, you're going to get two-for-one a few times. So Arch is what lets you get back from that. And it's so powerful. I wouldn't run more than two, though, because when it comes to multiples, you feel really bad. But definitely two, because Field of Ruin is a big deal. And there's been a few games where it's gotten stalled out enough that I've drawn two cards a turn with these, so for sure. One Field of Ruin, maybe two. Um, you might even just swap out the de Deadlands for it. It depends. If you're running into a lot of Search First Contas, throw on the second one. But there's a lot of times where you just don't have enough time to fix your mana. Against like Red Deck Wins or something, having this when you need the double black right away can feel pretty bad. Mathematically, this isn't a problem, but <laughs> you'd be surprised how often it comes up. So I'd probably run two if I'm running into a lot more Search First Contas, but I haven't been lately. So... 
Yeah, this is the master tier version that I'm running because you run into a lot of red deck wins. And the four Mono Craven, two cast down, three golden demise, and then stabilizing with Liliana after your Vraskets Contempt and Twilight Prophet feels really good. So if you don't get mana screwed, your win rate against red deck wins, it's about 70, 70%, I would say. Um, if you're on the play, it's like 80%. The only times I lose is when you tap out to stabilize the board and then they top deck a Hazard one or two turns in a row. I had some guy do top deck Hazard three turns in a row against me. Still almost won. It was the last one that killed me. Um, but that's pretty much all that kills you. Or if you just get flooded. Again, mana problems, but every deck's going to run into that. 24 lands has been the best for me. 22 was not okay. 23 was a little sketch. 24 has been good. Um, against approach, you lose. Honestly, the only approach decks I've been able to win against are Bant or Esper. The three color kind of sketchy mana bases where they stumble a little bit. So you can sneak through like a Twilight Prophet or a Tetsumok while they're like, they only have one blue source and they have to use that for Search for Skanta or something. Or play their Teferi that you've asked is contempted. Um, <clears throat> and then you get to Doomfall their approach. That's pretty much the only times I've won against those guys. But you only run into them one, maybe two times a, a QC. So if you're winning all your other matches, it's not going to be too bad. The Knight decks are coming in, or the blue-white tokens. Pretty much the history of Benalia decks is what I call them. If you have your Golden Demise, you win. Um, the only time it's really a problem is when you're on the draw, and they have turn two Knight of Grace into turn three <laughs> Benelish Marshal, and you don't have the Cast Down or the Never or the Chupacabra. Then you can run into some problems, but otherwise all you need is a Golden Demise, or you need them to not have the nut draw, and you're good. I'm trying to think what other decks you run into. Um, Red Green, if it's Dinos or otherwise, my win rate is like 90%. I think I've lost to Dinos once, <laughs> and it was because I was stuck on two land for six turns in a row. It was still a close game, too. Um, and then Mono Green. If you... Have, if you're on the play, you'll probably win because you have a two mana answer to their land or elves and that slows them down enough. Or you can moment a craven their land or elves, doomfall their three drops, and then Vraska's can tempt their next creature and then Chupacabra, whatever. It's pretty good. If they're on the play and they get Galta out and you don't have, if you just have two moment of craving sitting in your hand, you're gonna probably gonna lose. But I'd say it's like a 60% win rate easily. So, yeah. Um, in lower tiers, you run into a lot less um, control matchups, also a lot less red deck wins, so I'd go more mid-rangey with like a, a little more creature heavy. Um, maybe some Knight of Malice, because you run into probably a few more, maybe a few more not so finished approach decks, or, and we're talking like bronze, silver tier right now. So you're probably running into some incomplete approach decks or incomplete Scarab God decks. You know, decks where you just throw in your one or two Mythic or Rare Wild cards to just get a really good win con and hope that'll take you across the finish line. That's what I see a lot of the lower ranks do. Um, against red deck wins, if you're keeping in three or so Moment of Cravings and you have enough removal, you'll probably be fine against them. But yeah, you can go a little bit more into the mid rangey type level since... There's not going to be as many rekindling phoenixes and stuff. You don't need Vraska's Contempt quite as often. So, yeah, I'd add in a few more Knight of Malice, maybe some Dread Shades. That's a different version of the deck. Um, I think he's... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Let's add that back in. Don't know why I have Caps Lock on. Oh, another good thing about Elisir Born, it's an uncommon. It's pretty much like a Planeswalker if it doesn't get answered. So, side note. <clears throat> and you notice I'm not running any Cabal Strongholds. The reason being, it doesn't pay off until like turn 5 or 6. I run a lot of utility lands, so that's assuming that you have all swamps out. So it just doesn't do enough for me. There's different versions that run it. If you only run like 2 Field of Ruin, no Arches, you can get away with it. But yeah, that just doesn't do it for me. So, sorry, the <laughs> we kind of diverged a little bit in our topics at the end here. But yeah, this is the Mono Black deck. It's been doing really good for me. Um, not counting my last few QCs because those results have been kind of tarnished by the the recent crashing that's been happening. 
So I've been losing like at least one game per quick constructed just based on the client cra crashing and then when it queues me into the game you can't it double queues you so you can't click on anything or respond at all so you just immediately get timed out and lose. So none of those but up until I think it was two days ago when that started happening I entered I believe eight quick constructed queues and I had at least seven I had seven wins in five of them six wins in one and then just went like two and three or four and three on the other two mainly just from mana problems because if you have mana problems and then the nut draw and red dick wins and then an approach deck there's your three losses right there so there's a little bit of luck but this thing will get you there 90 percent of the time so once i get a result i'm going to be streaming a lot a lot more often now so once i get a result with it that doesn't involve it being tarnished by that sort of <laughs> automatic loss i'll be uploading that for you guys too so you can see it in action because it doesn't look amazing on paper but <laughs> tell you what it's fun to play so appreciate you guys uh, i'll be getting a lot more deck techs and content out to you appreciate your patience and uh hopefully you all have a good one see ya